Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be working on this Nintendo GameCube. Now, I did buy a whole lot of systems in the past. Normally I've been working on some handheld devices, but I did have these uh, GameCubes and this one in particular I've tested in the past and I know it has an issue with the disc reader. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the troubleshooting steps, but for the most part these generally tend to have an issue with the uh, potentiometer, which is for the laser on the disc reader. And I'll go ahead and show you how to adjust that, assuming that that is the case. Um, I'm still gonna go ahead and show you some of the, you know, very basic troubleshooting steps in order to try to get this working again. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and use a game. So here I just got Madden, this was cheap. I got it for a dollar, but normally this is what I use for testing my uh, games. So let's go ahead and pop that in. All right, just as expected. Next step, we're just gonna get a little bit of IPA, which is isopropyl alcohol. Now on this one, I have 99%. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on a Q-tip and then just simply dab it on there. Now I have to be very careful. I generally don't like doing this, um, but when you do, you don't wanna scrub or do anything like that. Let me see if I can turn the camera. So just generally wanna tap it on there and then just kind of gently, just kind of see if you can move anything away. Once we let it dry, we're gonna go ahead and test the game out and see if that works. Now, I don't expect this to actually work, but you never know. You might get lucky one day, so let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, same issue. So I already went ahead and removed the cables in the back. Let's go ahead and open up the GameCube. We're gonna have to start by removing the screws located in the bottom of the system. And we're gonna be using this bit specifically for these systems. Next, we're gonna wanna turn the system over, but be careful because you've removed the screws. So just hold it from the top. Once that's out, we can simply lift the case off. So it is pretty dirty just by looking at it, it's just pretty dusty, but I'm not gonna be covering that today. We're just gonna be working on fixing the actual disc. Um, one thing I like to do is just remove the back covers and the front cover. Now for the front cover, however, there is a ribbon that's located right in the middle. So you just wanna be careful because that is soldered on. So it's just held down by these two latches right here. And then this just can kind of sit there on the side. Um, and like I mentioned, it's soldered right here on this point. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the screws located here on the side for the fan. Um, and they're located right here. Let me see if I can turn it. There's one here and one here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those next. Once you remove the two screws, you can just simply slide it out word like this and then just set it to the side. After the fan, we're gonna to wanna to remove these screws located in the front. So this is where the control ports are. All right, so we're just gonna remove those four screws. All right, so once we remove the front, there should be a lot more screws that are located that compared to mine. I think someone's worked on this in the past. Uh, nonetheless, there should be around 10 to 12 screws. I, I actually don't remember, uh, but there's definitely more than what I have here. And you'll simply go ahead and go around the entire uh, system here uh, along th this metal plating and start removing all those screws and that should give us access to lift this off from the metal plating below so let me go ahead and do that now once all the screws are removed we're going to simply separate the optical drive from the motherboard so we're just going to lift up and we're going to keep the top portion and the the bottom portion which is the motherboard we're going to just set that to the side for now just be very careful now that we have the optical drive, we can just simply flip it around and there should be six screws located in the bottom and we simply just gotta go ahead and remove those. So here we have the potentiometer and this controls the strength of the laser. Now we wanna go ahead and read the current resistance value of this to determine 
how much we're gonna uh, bring this down. So normally I like to bring this down uh, by increments of 10 ohms. We should be somewhere between 150 to 250 ohms, but sometimes based on the type of GameCube, so you might have a Dole 001 or a Dole 101, um, some of those values may change, but generally what you wanna do is not bring it down too low because then you can uh, cause the laser to burn out. So you wanna just do small increments. So that's the reason why I like to do uh, increments of 10 just to be safe, but I try not to go any lower than maybe like 130 or 120. Um, so let's go ahead and get the reading on this first and then we're gonna go ahead and make our adjustments. Now, in case you're wondering on how to make those adjustments, uh, if you turn counterclockwise, uh, that will reduce the resistance and if you turn it clockwise, then you're increasing the resistance. So uh, that's just something to note. All right, so I have my multimeter. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to ohms, which is this symbol here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my black lead and put it on the left side. So I guess I should have mentioned first that here there's three little legs there's uh, one here on the left and then there's one above and then there's one below so we're going to be putting the black lead onto the one on the left and then the right lead onto the one in on the bottom and we're going to go ahead and get our measurement that way so let me just zoom out real quick so let's go ahead and get the reading okay so we got 184 ohms and this is actually within the range but like i said Sometimes these lasers can start going bad. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. So let's go ahead and adjust it just in small increments. So this one's already kind of getting close to the limit. We're gonna go ahead and see if that fixes it. Otherwise, we're gonna keep making those adjustments uh, up until we get to our bottom limit and, and see if that fixes it. So let's go ahead and do that. So when we turn it, we just wanna turn like maybe about an eighth or maybe less, just small increments to the left, so. Now let's get the reading again. And I think I should just keep it zoomed out. I just wanted to go ahead and show you all kind of the first one. So let's go ahead and get that reading. Okay, so that was way too much. So we're gonna go ahead and readjust it back up because um, that was obviously too much. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, 144. We're gonna increase it a little bit more again. Okay, that was too much. Let's bring it down. Okay, that's perfect, so I can work with that number. So let's go ahead and test that out and see what happens. In order to test it, we just simply bring back the existing unit, so this is just the motherboard, and the way it connects is this connects over into here, so we just wanna simply mount it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the fan back because I don't want it to just be dangling there, so just gonna simply slide it back in and then just connect the power back onto it as well as the AV cord. So in order to test this, we're just gonna simply put on the disc and then there are two switches that are located in the back and we wanna push out that way to simulate as if the lid is closed and then this spring here is the power button so you just simply press it. All right, and that didn't work. So we're gonna go ahead and make one more adjustment and see if that fixes it. So we're just gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat. Now, I'm not gonna show the entire process. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it off screen and then come back and test it again. So after several attempts later, I was finally able to get it down to a working condition. So I know that this uh, disc reader has gone bad. So I'm gonna not use this one just so that I don't risk damaging 
uh, anyone that decides to use this at a later point because it can damage your games over time. So I'm just going to go ahead and order a new part. But I did get this down all the way to 65 uh, ohms, which is really low. That's practically almost no resistance. So uh, that just goes to show you how bad that reader is. But I'll go ahead and show you this first. So let's go ahead and just turn it on. There you go, you can see here that it's finally loaded the game. So I'm going to open it up and show you just how low that resistance was, just so that you can see. But uh, if it is that low, I would just recommend saying that just replace the reader. And as you can see, it's pretty modular, so you can go ahead and remove it. So let me go back. You can see there that it's getting pretty close to 60 ohms, which is, uh, is very low. So I'm not going to use that, but... Um, this was just a way to show you all how to get it back to working condition. Hopefully yours is normally somewhere around 150 to 250 ohms, somewhere around there, 130, probably lowest. Um, once it starts getting lower than that, I mean, yeah, I would just recommend that your disc reader is probably replaced. But um, I did go ahead and show you the, all the steps that are required to just get it back to working condition. So like I mentioned, uh, the disc reader is simply just it's very modular, it's just attached to this, so you can go ahead and order one of these, um, which I will be doing, and once I find one, I'll go ahead and provide the link. But nonetheless, we're not gonna use this one, but we did get get it back to working condition, but I just do not plan on setting it, selling it that way. So that wraps up today's video. Hopefully you all learned something, and unfortunately we weren't able to keep this particular uh, disc reader, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it replaced anyway. But if anybody else is having similar issues, then these are the steps that you can definitely follow to get it back to working condition. As you saw, it's really not that hard to open it up and then troubleshoot and just kind of move it as long as you have a multimeter on hand. If you liked today's video, please be sure to leave a like. If you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to leave a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. I want to thank you all for watching. Catch you all next time.